Hey, my name is Bailey Weiser. I'm the owner of Hello Jude Photography, a North Georgia newborn and family photography studio, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about 10 things that I would do if I was starting from scratch, day one as a brand new photographer. We're gonna talk about some of the things that I see people doing when they're starting their business, um, some things that I did when I started my business, and the 10 things that I would recommend, no matter where you are in your photography journey, that you start with first. Let's dive in. So far, it seems like 2024 is the year of the photographer. I know of so many individuals who have said they're gonna start their business this year. Um, maybe they launched on January 1st, maybe they started talking about it at the end of last year, but they're really getting serious about it this year. Um, and if that's you, if you have a passion for photography, maybe it's a hobby of yours and you wanna transform it into something profitable, um, here's some things that I would recommend that you do as you're starting right off the bat. So number one, build a simple, an easy to navigate website. One of my biggest pet peeves is when I have a business that I'm wanting to learn more about and I maybe go to Google and I search them and the first and only thing that I can find about their business is a Facebook page. It's so unprofessional to me and guarantee you that I'm not gonna book anything with them, whatever service they offer. Now, if they have even the simplest website, a contact form, a little bit about their business, um, and the services that they offer, I'm a lot more likely to actually move forward and um, hire them for their services. Same with photography. You need something other than a social media platform. Um, I also would recommend that you have your own domain. Um, Pixie Set is a great option, but I don't really like when people have .pixieset.com as their website. It reminds me a lot of back in the day when we had like MySpace and WordPress and things like that. and to me, it's also not professional. So it's like $20 a year to have a domain. So purchase a domain with your business name, build a simple website. I love using Wix. Squarespace is another great option for people starting out with a lot of templates, but I really love Wix. My website's built on Wix. I've built tons of websites on Wix. It's simple, easy to navigate, easy to use, easy to build. There's also templates, but you could create something completely from scratch. Um, have a place where you can showcase who you are, showcase what you do, um, include your service area, include a contact form so people know how to get in touch with you. That is the number one thing that I would do. Another thing that I would do, I would create a clear brand. So when people think of brand, they think of colors, they think of fonts, they think of logos. Yes, that is part of it. But also part of your brand is your brand messaging, the tone in which you speak, um, the way in which you display things. All of the things are part of your brand. Um, different elements, uh, whether it's colors or a style or an icon, things like that also are part of your brand. So. You can go through the route of like an Etsy or um, any of these other platforms to create a logo. I would recommend trying to do it on your own though if you don't have the money to hire a brand designer. Um, you can create something on Canva. My rules of thumb are create something that's timeless, that's gonna grow as your business grows. You don't need anything trendy. You don't need a gold foiled camera on your logo. You don't need um, anything that does not point to what you do. Um, so for example, florals are great, but I also think florals, like you're not a floral company. Um, and so you don't really need florals all over your branding. Now, a couple here and there is fine. If you're a feminine, like motherhood photographer, I could understand that, or a wedding photographer, I could understand that. Um, but there's a time and a place for certain brand elements. I like to keep it classic. Um, icon with initials, very clean, clear um, logo that can be easily read, that has a tagline of what it is that you offer or where it is that you serve, and leave it at that. And then build a, um, build a template around that for things that you're gonna post, whether it's blog posts or Instagram posts or emails. Um, show your brand, showcase what it is that you created, make sure that it flows with your work. If you shoot really 
bold and moody, maybe don't have a pastel logo. So something else that you can do that's really gonna help you when you get in a rut of not knowing what to post or what to say is make a list of five things that you offer that solve the problems of your potential clients. So for example, as a motherhood photographer, there are five things that I can offer my clients that make me unique. One, I'm a mom, so I understand those early newborn days. I understand the toddler temper tantrums. I get it, I've been there. I know what a struggle it is to take family photos. And so I can sympathize with my clients. Number two, I offer a client wardrobe. And so that means that I get to take a big part of the stress out of my clients' um, planning process when it comes to taking their portraits. Um, another thing, maybe it's you have a past experience. So I know a lot of photographers who um, transfer from being a teacher or a nurse or things like that, which really can play a big role into why you made the transition and the experience that you bring, even though it's not creatively as like a photographer or an artist, but something that you can bring to the table from your past experience, your past job, or things that you've done for work. So if you can use your tone of voice, use your brand messaging, and have five things that you can offer to your potential clients, this is gonna help you in the long run when it comes to um, selling your services, to showing the value that you have to bring, and then hopefully bringing new clients in. Number four, only share on social media what it is that you wanna book. We've all been there, we've all done the crazy dog shoots, the birthday parties, all of those things. Um, when you are starting out as a photographer, you want as much experience and much practice as you can get. Um, you want to shoot everything so that you can figure out what it is that you love. But there's also a fear in that um, and a big caution with that because you book what you post. People will book what they see. And so say that you really love weddings, but you've been photographing dog birthday parties. I wouldn't post the dog birthday parties. I would find a way where you could get wedding experience, whether it's being a second shooter, whether it is doing a style shoot, something like that to showcase wedding work and only share that work. Um, say that you wanna shoot newborns, but you've been doing some corporate headshots. Very different. Don't post the corporate headshots unless you wanna book more corporate headshots. Try and find something in the, um, in the category that you wanna shoot, whether it's newborns, families, if you wanna shoot pet portraits, find someone that has a pet that you can photograph. Only share what you want to book. On the topic of social media platforms, you don't need them all. I would start with one or two and that's plenty. Um, I don't have Facebook. Meta is crazy and there's a lot of disadvantages to not having a Facebook, but that's just a personal choice that I've made not to have a Facebook. So I can't have a Facebook business page if I don't have a personal page. But I have Instagram and that is where I run 90% of my social media content. I don't have a TikTok. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I think if you start with too many, you're gonna get overwhelmed and it's a very fast way to guarantee you're not gonna post anything. Now, if you have an Instagram and you have a Facebook, create a Facebook business page and then you can just click that button to share to both. Um, Pinterest is also a great option, but I don't think it's entirely necessary to start right off the bat with that. Um, it is very uh, visually driven, mo much like Instagram. And so it does have advantages, but I think starting out, I would focus on one area um, and go from there. Don't overwhelm yourself with all of the different options that are out there. Stick with one, do it well. And then if you feel like you can add on another, then add on another down the road. Number six, start blogging. This is one thing I wish I had done as soon as I started my business. I started a couple years in, um, but blogging is a great way to grow your SEO, which is search engine optimization. What you do is the more content you share, the more keywords you have on your website, the more frequently you're posting things on your website, Google recognizes that and they rank you higher and higher and higher. So every time someone searches for newborn photographer in my area, the more frequently you're posting, the more great content you're sharing, the more keywords that you're putting in those posts, the higher you're gonna rank. Um, and so SEO has been a huge thing for my business because I post blogs pretty regularly, which means that my SEO is continuing to grow and I'm getting quite a few inquiries every week just from Google. People that have never seen my work until they Google searched newborn photographer in my area. So start with a blog. Um, I would recommend pulling some of your favorite sessions. Again, only post what you want to book 
And so leave the dog birthday parties aside, stick with whatever category it is you're wanting to, to book more of, um, and then create these visual and storytelling blogs that you can put keywords in, searchable things. Um, you can explain the process, explain how you um, solved problems that your clients were having, the things that you offered, all of those things are gonna be really helpful in blog posts. Number seven, and probably the most importantly, so I don't know why it's number seven, but it's just number seven on my list. Um, make sure you're doing things legally. Get a business license. Um, they're not difficult to get. Go to your city and or your county, depending on where you are, and um, get a business license. It's like $100 for a year. Um, make sure you're doing things correctly. Make sure that you have a separate business checking account um, so that all of your business transactions can be going through that. Um, you have separate bank accounts so that when you do your taxes, it's less confusing. Um, and also make sure that you have contracts for all of your sessions. So there is um, the legal page, there's engaged legal. There's so many other options that have um, templated contracts that you can use and purchase um, that are great. You can also go to a local lawyer's office and ask them to help you draw up a contract for your clients. No matter if the session is free or not, I always have a contract with my clients. Things like um, liability, creative control, force majeure, um, what happens if they don't show up? What happens if it's raining? What happens if they need to reschedule? All of those things are in my contract. And so the best thing you can do is just go ahead and start strong with a contract. Number eight, get a business email address. Um, I don't send any of my clients um, emails or get clients to email me at my personal email address. Everything is my business. It's another great way to separate things and to feel less overwhelmed by your inbox because the last thing I want is to open my inbox with my personal account and have a bunch of ads from websites that I signed up for to get like discounts and then trickled in there are some like inquiries. It's just gonna be too much. So have all of your business um, inquiries, emails, everything go to one account. Um, and I would recommend having it either your business name at Gmail, which is what I started with um, and I've just kept it. You can also get a, um, a custom email. Wix does offer that. If I were to go back, I probably would have started with that and had like, hello at hellojudephotography.com instead of hellojudephotography at Gmail because I just feel like the Gmail is less professional, uh, but it's free. So I started with it. I've never changed it. I don't know if I ever will change it just because I would have to, like all of my current clients have that email address. But if I were to start over, I probably would have done it the more professional route and gotten a custom um, email domain. Number nine, do not be swayed by the trends today. Um, and what I mean by that is shoot the way that you want to shoot. Don't be swayed by the different editing styles, the different trendy motion blur or pantyhose lens filters or things like that. You know your art best. Shoot the way that you want to shoot. And if you want to shoot with the motion blur and that's you, that's great. But don't do it because everyone else is doing it. Do it because you want to do it and you love it. Um, same with if you're like a timeless classic uh, or a light and airy photographer, a dark and moody, shoot because that's the way you love your images, not because that's what's most popular right now. Um, I hate seeing photographers like every three or four months change their editing style. One, because it's the fastest way to guarantee people are not going to rebook with you because it looks like you don't know what you're doing. Um, but two, they're so easily tempted by what's trendy. Um, and trends are fine, but trends are not things that people are going to print and put all over their walls and be proud of in 15, 20 years. So shoot the way that you want to shoot. Don't be swayed by what other people are doing. And on this last note, number 10, don't compare your day one to someone's year 10. And this is a hard thing to do because everyone started somewhere. Um, and it's really easy to look up to certain photographers, whether it's someone you know locally or someone through Instagram or YouTube or whatever. Uh, but we all started from the very bottom. We all started with that first booking. We all started with probably un lots of unpaid sessions. We all started learning and redoing and finding our style, finding our groove, learning how to shoot in manual. We all started the same exact place. We all started 
on level ground. So don't compare your first day, your first week, your first year, or probably your even first five years to someone else's experience. Everyone's gonna do it a little differently. Everyone's gonna learn differently. Everyone's gonna book differently. Everyone's gonna charge differently. So start your business strong by having confidence in yourself. Learn your craft, take as many online courses as you can, practice, 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 shoot as many things as you can. Um, take your camera with you everywhere you go. I mean, go to the park, go to, I don't know, just go on a walk and take pictures of the trees, take pictures of birds, take pictures of things that move, things that are still. Um, work on your settings so that when you actually have paying clients, you can be quick with your adjustments. Um, the more practice you do, the more confident you're gonna get, the more confident you're gonna get, the more you can charge, the more you can charge, the more profitable your business is going to be. I hope this video was helpful. I know that was a lot of information, but those are 10 things that I would do if I was starting from scratch on day one with a brand new photography business. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. Make sure you like and subscribe and be on the lookout for new videos being added almost every week. See you next time.